Hi guys, and welcome to Vocabulary for Life Optimize English Class. Essa aula vai ser uma aula gravada para níveis intermediários e avançados. Então, a aula vai ser gravada toda em inglês. Uma versão dessa aula em português vai também estar disponível no nosso canal do YouTube. Então, se você é nível beginners ou iniciantes, você pode acessar a aula em português e aprender um pouco mais a respeito de palavras, expressões relacionadas a esse tema tão atual que é na, o mundo inteiro vem passando, né? Falando de coronavirus, isso mesmo, a aula de hoje nós vamos tratar do, da pandemia do coronavírus é, e algo que assola o mundo inteiro. Então, vamos para a aula? So, in today's class, as I said before, we're going to talk about vocabulary related to coronavirus and this pandemic that it's been going on all around the world. Uh, in today's class, we have to understand uh, a few vocabulary expressions related to it. So, I want you to understand and I want you to focus on the vo specific vocabulary related to this topic. Since we're talking about coronavirus, you have to understand some specific words. Uh, this is going to be an interactive class, so I ask you to, during the video, during the class, pause the video if necessary to answer my questions, to repeat some of the words I said, and it's very important that you participate in English with me from where, wherever you are. If you're in your house right now, probably we are all in lockdown, so if you are in your house right now, Remember to pause the video and repeat the, the, the words I said or pause the video if I ask you a question, think about the question, then try to answer it out loud. It's very important for your learning, okay? So, let's get to the class. The first thing we need to understand are some words and expressions related to this disease, to the virus. Everything we are going to use in the class, you have to pre-contextualize these words before. So, uh, I want you to take a look at these words right here. We have a lot of words related to the to coronavirus and the first block of word that we're going to talk about is the word illness. Repeat after me, illness or disease. Repeat after me, disease, okay? And illness or a uh, disease, it can be mild or it can be severe. So, repeat after me, please, mild, severe. We also have some symptoms. We can say uh, fever, so fever or cough, cough. We can say shortness of breath, so shortness of breath. Difficulty breathing, difficulty breathing. Now, I want you to understand how these two words, they are written similar. We write them similarly, but we don't pronounce them the same way. They have different pronunciations. So, breathe, repeat after me, breathe and breath, breath, okay? Uh, we also have the word lungs, lungs, respiratory failure, a little bit tricky this word, but let's go. Respiratory, respiratory, you have to say it fast, guys. Respiratory failure. Respiratory failure. Don't worry about the meaning of the words right now. We're going to focus for now only on the pronunciation of these words, okay? So focus on pronunciation and not on the what it means or the definition for these words. Throughout the class, during the class, I am going to tell you everything about these words. You're going to finish the class understanding everything and what all these words mean. So again, uh, respiratory failure, acute pneumonia, repeat, acute pneumonia. So, in English, in this word, we do not pronounce the P. So, remember, the P is a mute, is a silent P, we do not pronounce it. So, acute pneumonia, acute pneumonia. Also, we have the word hand sanitizer. This little word causes a little bit of confusion. We tend to think that it's one thing and it's another. We are going to see this during the class, but hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Then we have the word bleach, repeat, bleach. We have the word wipes, wipes. 
And then we have some other symptoms. Uh, cough, repeat again, cough. Remember, there is a small difference. Coffee is something we drink. I love coffee. But uh, we have coffee, okay, which is the drink. And we have the word cough, which is not good. I don't like to cough. So, cough, okay? And we have the word sneeze. Sneeze. See how the S in the beginning goes? S sneeze, okay? And tissues. So we have tissues, all right? Tissues. So those are the vocabulary you need to understand for today's class. Uh, focus on this vocabulary if you want. Pause the class right now. Try to repeat all of these words. And when you are 100% sure you understand the pronunciation of these words, then you can continue the class and I'll be here waiting for you. I'm not going anywhere. All right, guys, now that you understand how to pronounce, now that you know how to pronounce all of these words, we're going to focus on the first question, the question that everybody asks, or at least everybody asked in the beginning. Now, I think a lot of us know what it is, but in the past, in the beginning, I would say January, February this year, a lot of people had questions about what is this thing? What is this virus? What is this problem that is killing a lot of people? And before it became a pandemic, we are going to understand this too, before it became a pandemic, uh, we didn't know what it was, we didn't know what the, the name meant, or we weren't certain about the disease at all. But what is COVID-19? Again, the question is COVID-19. What is COVID-19? Is it a virus? Is it a bacteria? Is it an infection? So, what's COVID-19? Do you know what that is? Before reading, try to pause and think about it. What's COVID-19? Do you have a good answer for that question? Well, I do. COVID-19 is a mild to severe respiratory illness that is caused by a coronavirus. So, mild to severe respiratory illness. Let's understand these words. First of all, you have to understand mild. Mild means not strong, not too strong. Severe is the opposite. So, we have the word mild and the word severe, okay? Uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 is a disease. We know this, right? Remember, guys, let's understand the word, the word disease, the definition. Disease, all right? Or illness, they are similar. Disease, illness, it means health problem. For example, cancer is a type of disease. Diabetes is a type of disease or illness. Uh, pneumonia is a type of disease or illness. Everything that causes health problems, okay, that causes you to be sick, like, <coughs> or not well, you need to go to the hospital, that's a disease or that's a, a, an illness. So remember, a disease and illness. A disease and illness. And yeah, COVID-19 is a mild to severe respiratory illness. Why respiratory illness? It attacks your lungs, your respiratory system. You can't breathe. It causes problems when you are breathing, okay? So, it could be mild, not too strong. You don't need to go to the hospital. Just need some medication and you'll be fine. Or it could be severe, especially if you are in the, root, in the risk group. So, if you are in the risk group, then we're going to talk about it after, but um, if you are in the risk group, then you are in danger of getting a, of catching or suffering from a very severe illness because of coronavirus. So, what are the symptoms of coronavirus? The symptoms are characterized by cough, fever, or shortness of breath. So, let's understand. <coughs> I'm sorry. Cough. Okay, I just coughed. This is <coughs> to cough. 
uh, fever, when your temperature is very high, when you're burning up, then you have a fever, okay? So, fever and shortness of breath. What's shortness, people? When you don't have enough, when you don't have sufficient. So, shortness of breath. I don't have enough breath. I don't have enough, I can't breathe. So, if I can't breathe well enough, then I have shortness of breath, okay? Uh, and also, this problem, when it's severe, it can uh, progress or it can lead to pneumonia and respiratory failure. So, pneumonia is an example of a severe problem, okay? So, pneumonia is a severe disease, is a severe health problem. And respiratory failure, when you cannot breathe, your lungs cannot produce, cannot help you breathe, okay? So, we all know we breathe through our lungs, okay? The organs that we have responsible for breathing are our lungs. We've got two of them. So, when your lungs cannot, cannot, okay, work or cannot function properly, they fail. If they fail to stop working, okay, you are in respiratory failure. And that's when you need the ventilator to help you breathe, all right? Uh, or to breathe for you in some cases. When you cannot, your lungs are in complete respiratory fa failure, then you need the ventilator in order to breathe, all right? Next topic. So now we're going to talk about these three little words right there. We're going to talk about epidemic, pandemic, and outbreak. Do you guys understand what epidemic is? Do you understand what pandemic is? What about outbreak? Do you know what that is? Do you have any idea? Do you know how different the difference between these three words? I'm gonna tell you. So let's think about outbreak first. We will start with outbreak. Guys, outbreak is a sudden rise in the incidence of a disease. What's this? Sudden rise of an incidence of a disease. Teacher, I don't understand. What's a sudden? Guys, sudden, sudden or sudden is a very fast movement, okay? So, if it's fast, it is sudden. We use the expression in English, all of a sudden. I'm gonna put it right there for you. So, all of a sudden. All of a sudden means very fast, without prior or without previous notice, okay? For example, I was fine yesterday and all of a sudden I started to cough. <coughs> I coughed without previous notice, very fastly. So, an outbreak is a sudden rise, increase, okay, of an incidence of a specific disease. So, if I have um, in, a, in a region or in a specific place, a sudden, a fast rise of a disease, a lot of people are contaminated or a lot of people get sick because of this disease, then we can say that it's an outbreak, okay? We have in our region, for example, outbreaks of dengue, right? We have, we suffer from this problem. Uh, in specific parts of the year, we have a big number of people uh, suffering from this disease. Okay, so that's an outbreak. Coronavirus started as an outbreak, and you will understand the difference now. So, outbreak is when a lot of people start to get sick in the same region. And then we have the word epidemic. An epidemic is an outbreak of a disease that spreads quickly and affects many individuals at the same time. So, what's an outbreak? Is it the sudden rise of the disease, and then an epidemic? is when a lot of people from the region uh, are affected by this disease. So, outbreak, I would say, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say that an outbreak is a little bit smaller, controlled, like coronavirus started as an outbreak. A lot of people started to be sick, a lot of people started to uh, go to the hospitals, that's in Wuhan, Wuhan, China. Yeah, that's a difficult name to pronounce, Wuhan. So, a lot of people in Wuhan, China, started to get sick and they went to the hospital. In the beginning, everybody thought it was an outbreak of a disease. And then it became an epidemic. So, they, they had to close down the city, they had to close down, I don't know if you remember, but they closed down the market 
where it all started, where it all originated. So that's when it became an epidemic. But what's the difference, teacher, between an epidemic and a pandemic? As you can see, a pandemic is an outbreak of a disease that occurs over a wide geographic area and affects an exceptionally high proportion of the population. So guys, what is the difference between epidemic and pandemic? Just the wide spread of the disease. In the beginning, as you can see in the video, it started in China and then it went all the way around the globe. Nowadays, we have uh, the pandemic of coronavirus in pretty much all countries around the world. So nowadays it is uh, unfortunately, and that's sad, but nowadays it's not an epidemic anymore. Nowadays it became a pandemic. So coronavirus started as an outbreak, then it became an epidemic, and then it's a pandemic as it is nowadays. So as you can see, an outbreak may become, possibly can become an epidemic if it spreads enough and an epidemic may become a pandemic if it spreads enough. So if it spreads enough, it is outbreak, epidemic, pandemic, all right? Let's move on to the next topic. All right, guys, we talked about the word spread. Last, in the last slide, you, I mentioned a few times the word spread when an epidemic, when a, an outbreak spread, it becomes an epidemic. When it spread again, it becomes a pandemic. So how does the virus spread? So how does the coronavirus spread around the world or around the places and stuff? Well, the virus caused by COVID-19, and that's the pronunciation as COVID-19. The virus caused by the COVID-19 seems to be spreading easily and sustainably in the community. That's called community spread. So the virus is spreading sustainably and it is spreading uh, easily without any difficulties, without any problems, okay? Throughout the community. Uh, a lot of you guys are now probably in lockdown in your homes because of this. Uh, and we already know that the virus spreads very quickly, very easily, and sustainably. That's what we call community spread. But how does the virus spread? Okay, guys, before we continue, pause the video and try to think about this answer, okay? How does the virus spread? You know how to answer that question in English? I'm waiting for you, so let's go. All right, now that you probably thought about it, you, I don't know if you were able to answer or not, I'm gonna give you some more vocabulary so by the end of the class, you can answer this question. Uh, the virus is spread between people, but how? Between people who are in close contact, okay? So if you are in close contact with one another, uh, that's about six feet, uh, a little, less than two meters, 1.86 meters or so, uh, that's approximately the, the close proximity that you need to be to another person to be able to catch this disease, okay? The virus will spread from people to people, okay? Uh, that's how the virus is spreading. Uh, and how? By the air, by the look, how does this virus spread? Okay, guys, this virus is spread through respiratory droplets. Let's understand this word, respiratory droplets, okay? Uh, the virus is spread through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Do you remember to cough and to sneeze? Let's see, to cough, <coughs> to sneeze, achoo. that's how the virus is spread, through my cough, or through my sneeze. And how, guys? Through droplets. What are droplets, okay? Respiratory droplets are very small, very tiny, tiny pieces or bits of uh, liquid, okay? Or I would say uh, saliva, okay? Mucus. So if you sneeze, you release a lot of mucus into the air 
those are the very small particles are okay droplets so when i sneeze i produce droplets when i speak right now thank god nobody is in front of me i'm alone in the room because i'm talking to you guys right now and i am producing thousands and millions of small droplets of saliva because i am talking by just talking to a person guys you don't have to spit to a person by just talking to a person you are liberating you are spreading a lot of saliva in forms of droplets these small particles they release when we when we talk they release when we sneeze when we cough so that's why we need to take some precautions and i'll tell you after what they are okay so these droplets as i said when i release these droplets my droplets can land in the mouths in the noses or in the eyes of other people okay so whoever is nearby whoever is close to me in small proximity remember these words nearby or close to me whoever is nearby or whoever is close to me my uh, receive my small particles of droplets all right so these droplets they will be inhaled focus on this word inhaled okay the droplets will be inhaled into the person's lungs so guys let's focus on vocabulary inhale exhale again inhale exhale we also say in English, guys, breathe in, breathe in, breathe out. So breathe in, inhale, breathe out, exhale, okay? So also, guys, it may be possible, it is probably possible that a person can catch COVID-19 by touching surfaces or an object that has the virus on it and then touching their own mouth, nose, or eyes, okay? Uh, I can also possibly, I can possibly get this disease, I can possibly catch this disease if I touch a contaminated surface and then I touch my mouth, my nose, and my eyes. That's why it's very, very important that you do not, in these times of crisis, you do not touch your mouth, nose, or eyes. Of course, I'm touching my mouth, nose, and eyes to explain you all of this vocabulary, but it's for a good cause, and I sanitized my hands, I washed my hands before I started this class. So, let's move on to the next topic, guys. All right, so now we're going to talk about the words social distance, isolation, and quarantine. Social distance, isolation and quarantine do you know the difference guys do you understand or to you they are all the same this is a question guys that um, to a lot of people including americans including natives it can sound the same but there is a small difference between one and another okay so let's understand social distance what is social distance guys as you can see social distance it's an avoidance of close contact with other people during the outbreak of a contagious disease in order to minimize exposure and reduce the transmission of infection. See that picture right there? You see how those people, are they close to each other or are they far from each other? A little far from each other. So answer this question to me. Are they in small proximity? Are they close to each other or distant? Or far from each other they are far from each other right so that's what they are doing they are maintaining a social distance when you avoid okay guys what is to avoid when you avoid the close contact with other people you are maintaining social distance let's think about and it's funny but let's think about this thing before the outbreak of coronavirus, before the pandemic, uh, everybody went to the bank, everybody went to the bakery, to the supermarket, and we formed lines in the bank of supermarket, right? Think about how it used to be, how it was in the past. The lines used to be crowded, people would be in small proximity, almost touching each other, right? Nowadays, 
people are, I would say, a little bit more polite about it. They are respecting the other person's space. So when you see a line, which is rarely nowadays, we are all quarantined in our houses, but um, when you see a line, when you see it, if you see it, <laughs> it will be formed of people far from each other. It will be formed from people with people respecting each other's privacy. So, and it, respecting each other's space bubble, I would say. So, that's social distance. Is the fact or the simple action of trying to avoid small contact with other people. And then we have the word isolation, and that's a tricky part, isolation and quarantine. Let's understand what isolation means. Isolation is used to separate ill people who have a disease from those who are healthy. So guys, isolation is when I separate the ill, the sick people, okay, remember, ill, sick. When I separate the sick people from the healthy people, okay? So that's isolation. We can use isolation uh, in hospitals. For example, a person arrives in the hospital with an infectious tuberculosis. So if a person arrives in the hospital and is diagnosed with, uh, with an infectious tuberculosis, they will be isolated. They will be put in a room where there is no contact with the outside, where people need to wear specific clothes to be in touch with them. And that's what they're doing right now with the epidemic or the pandemic of coronavirus. Um, patients in the hospitals, they are in isolation. They're closing entire floors of a hospital. So if you go to a hospital you or if you know a person who works in the hospital, they can tell you that. They are closing a specific floor of the hospital, the second floor, the fourth floor, whatever. They are closing one floor and dedicating that floor specifically to suspects of coronavirus because of the spread of the disease. We want to control the spread of the disease. And then what's a quarantine? Okay, guys, quarantine is a little bit different because remember, isolation, I isolate the sick. Quarantine, I quarantine the healthy. That's the difference right there. Quarantine is used to separate and restrict the movement of well people, of healthy people. So if I restrict the movement of a healthy person, I am quarantining that person. Simply to see if that person will, can, will uh, develop the disease or not. Let's imagine, for example, that I recently arrived from Italy and we know that in Italy the outbreak of coronavirus is uncontrollably. It's very sad and a lot of people are dying because of this. But if I came from Italy recently, necessarily I would have to be quarantined, okay? Because I don't know if I have the virus in me. It's not possible to know if I caught the virus. So I will have to be quarantined. I'm not in isolation because I am not confirmed to be sick. I'm just in quarantine where I cannot have access to other places and see other people because, uh, because I may be sick. I probably am sick, okay? Um, an example, my brother recently, to, recently traveled to Bahia when he came back, he is in quarantine now. He's in his house uh, because we don't know if he's sick or not. He doesn't have the symptoms. He's not showing symptoms. He's well. He's healthy. But we don't know if he caught the, the virus or not. Other words related to this term can be stay at home. Okay? Right now we are in stay at home or self-isolation. I chose to isolate. I chose to be in my house. So that's self-isolation. And self-isolation, guys, doesn't necessarily mean I am uh, sick, okay? But I could be or cannot be, but I, I am in self-isolation. I'm not in the hospital. I'm not in another place. I am in my home, isolated in my home. And we have the word lockdown. Lockdown, okay? Uh, this word is interesting because lockdown is commonly more used 
than quarantine, isolation, in other words. But lockdown basically means I am locked inside a place, okay? For example, the city of Ipatinga or the city of Ipatinga, yeah, the, let's use Ipatinga as an example. The city of Ipatinga is in lockdown. Not completely, but uh, the places are closed, some of the stores are closed, schools are closed, a lot of um, markets and a lot of stores and a lot of things are closed because of the lockdown order that the city hall uh, declared. So the city hall declared lockdown order, okay? The city hall declared and locked down, a lockdown order, which means nobody can open their business except specific business, of course, but that's a lockdown order. So, shelter in place is another word that can be used. We can say shelter in place. I am in my house. My house is my shelter. Is the place where I shelter, the place where I live, okay? And I protect myself. So, shelter in place. Protect yourself in your place, wherever you are, in your, in your home, for example. All right, these words are interesting because we can use in other contexts as well. But right now, we are talking about coronavirus, okay? Let's go to the next topic. All right, guys. So now we're going to talk about ways to prevent from COVID-19, okay? So how can I be safe? How can I prevent myself from catching this disease? It's very important, guys. And remember, if you are in your house right now, if you are listening to my class, or if you're watching my class, wherever you are, it's better for you to stay healthy and home than sick and dead, probably, or I don't know, it's sad, but um, I normally say it's better safe, we are better safe than sorry. We don't want to be sorry, we prefer to be safe, so better safe than sorry. Guys, ways to prevent from this disease, okay? The best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus. So, avoid, avoid being exposed to the virus. You don't want to be exposed to this virus because if you are exposed to the virus, probably, most likely, you will be uh, contaminated as well. But the basic and the most important of all, guys, it's the number one thing to do. It's the basic and most important of all. Wash your hands, guys. Wash your hands with soap and water. Simply. This virus is, although it is uh, very dangerous and killing a lot of people, this virus is very simple to kill, to be killed. We can kill this virus very simply. Uh, and simply by washing our hands with soap, regular soap, it doesn't need to be special soap, okay? So, if you have any type of soap in your house, just wash your hands, okay? For at least 20 seconds, alright? Especially after you've been in public place or when you blow your nose, okay? If you blow your nose, you want to wash your hands, okay? If you cough using your hands, you want to wash your hands as well, okay? Or if you sneeze, achoo, you want to uh, wash your hands as well. So, blowing your nose, sneezing or coughing, you want to wash your hand. Also, be, uh, after touching a dirty surface or after arriving from the street, okay? Please, guys, wash your hands. It's very important. I don't want to get sick. Also, the next, put distance between yourself and other people. Self-isolation, quarantine, okay? We talked about it in the previous slide. So, put distance between yourself and other people if COVID-19 is spreading in your community. This is especially important for people who are at a higher risk of getting very sick. Guys, let's talk about this for a minute. You want to put distance between yourself and other people. We know that right now in our region, in our community, uh, the disease is spreading very quickly, very fast. So what we want to do right now is to put distance between the people, uh, especially people who are at high risk, okay? Uh, who are the people 
that are in high risk of getting sick. Elderly people, and that's a uh, curious word for you. We don't call them old people. It's rude. It's not a good way to, to call uh, old people. We want to say elderly people. Okay, so elderly people, 60 years plus, 60 years and above, they are at very high risk of um, getting the disease and getting sick and suffering from severe cases of the disease, okay? Um, people who have immune problems or people with healthy problems, with people with health problems, people who are not healthy, they have any type of immune disease, okay, they are in high risk as well. So there are some groups of people who are in high risk, the, both of the most important that I can think of right now, I can only think of these two groups, are elderly people and people with immune diseases, all right? Uh, guys, the next one is personal and the next one I think everybody can do and it's a matter of politeness. Okay? You don't want to cough or you don't want to blow your nose if you are next to a person. You don't want to cough uh, into another person's mouth. You don't want to do that. You want to cover your mouth and your nose. That's a matter of politeness. Come on, people. So let's think about this. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when you cough or sneeze or use the inside of your elbow. Guys, very important. We're going to use a tissue, okay? What's a tissue? A piece of paper or a cloth, fabric, okay? Uh, in the past, we used to have those, uh, people had the handkerchief, which is a square fabric, which is a tissue, okay? Or you can just use a, a napkin, a paper towel, any type of tissue that you have. Remember, if you are going outside of your house, Put some tissues in your pocket, okay? Keep some tissues in your pocket because you want to cough or sneeze with a tissue. But teacher, I don't have a tissue and I need to cough and it's fast. Simply do this. Use the inside of your elbow, okay? So you want to use the inside part of your elbow. What you're doing is you're just sneezing or coughing inside part of your elbow, okay? So this is my elbow. You're sneezing your coughing, coughing right here, all right? Very important also, if you sneezed or if you coughed, what you wanna do? Wash your hands, okay? If you use a tissue, roll the tissue carefully and throw the tissue immediately, immediately in the trash, okay? And wash your hands after, of course. All right, guys, we want to clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. And this is, ha this is something that we need to do daily, okay? I, I, am, I am a little bit of a clean freak. I like to clean a lot. So in the school right now, I am doing this hourly. Every hour, I get a spray bottle and I spray all the places and I disinfect and I clean all the places. So that's what you want to do. You want to uh, disinfect, all right, all the surfaces, all the surfaces that is used daily. And I'll tell you the ones after in the next slide, okay? But another one is if you are sick, okay? If you are sick, you want you should wear a face mask, guys. This is a big polemic. A lot of people are talking about it. I don't know if you remember, but the in the past days we couldn't find masks to buy. Okay, guys, it's wrong. Let's not think about it. Let's not do that, people. You don't want to wear a mask unless you are sick. Okay, if you are sick, then you should wear a mask. You wear a mask to protect spreading the, your virus, the virus in your body to other people. Okay, uh, if you are not sick and you are not in contact with other people, why should you wear a mask? You don't want to wear a mask if you are not sick. Okay, unless unless, except if you are caring for a sick person. Imagine that you have a sick person in your house and that person is showing a lot of sim symptoms related to the coronavirus, then you should wear a mask, okay? In that case specifically, you should wear a mask if that person is not wearing a mask, okay? 
you want to be safer than sorry, I would say you have to go to a place, there is a lot of people, you are afraid that you will touch your mouth, nose or eyes, you don't, you can't control this, then let's imagine for example a supermarket, you're going to a supermarket right now, you shouldn't go to a supermarket unless you need to, but um, you need to go to the supermarket and there is a lot of people, a concentration of people, then this is me, Okay, I would wear a mask in this case because I will be exposed to a lot of people and I don't know, I can't control when I am going to touch my mouth, nose or eyes. So then I will wear a mask, okay? Also, very important, if you're going to a hospital too, you're going to the hospital because you are showing the symptoms of the disease, then wear a mask in the hospital, okay? It's a uh, respect to you and to the other people around you as well. But do not wear a mask all the time, it's so uncomfortable. I had to wear... All right, so let's talk about the surfaces that you should be cleaning. Let's talk about the surfaces there that you should be cleaning daily or hourly or every time you touch it, <laughs> I would say. Uh, guys, these surfaces are Doorknobs, doorknobs, you want to clean the doorknobs. A lot of germs and a lot of viruses are in the doorknobs, especially if a lot of people touch it, okay? And a quick tip, you don't want to use your hand to open doors anymore, okay? Depending on the doorknob that you have, you can simply open the door with your elbow. This is what I do here in the school. My doorknobs are the long knob, so I just open the door with my elbow, okay? So clean the doorknobs in your house, people. Clean the doorknobs in your house, it's important. Light switch, all right, we touch this light switch every day, all the time to turn the light on, turn the light off, turn the light on, turn the light off. So we wanna clean it. Countertops, guys, all the countertops in your house. In your kitchen, you probably have a countertop, a beautiful countertop, okay? It could be wood, or it could be marble, or it could be glass. It doesn't matter. Clean it, disinfect it. You need to do that. All right, guys, handles, not just the doorknob. Everything that you touch to open or to move is called handle. In my kitchen, I have a cabinet. I have a handle to, to open the cabinet. On my fridge, my refrigerator, the outside of my refrigerator, I have a handle to open the door, okay? So clean your handles. All right, guys, stairway handrail, stairway handrail. Okay, guys, a stairway or the stairs, we already know, everything you, you use to go to the second floor is a stairway. And stairways, they have the handles to where I need that, where I touch, okay, to help me go up. So that's called hand rail. That thing on the stairwell is a hand rail. So remember, hand rail. Keyboard at work, guys, your keyboard, your mouse, you have to clean it. My employees here, my only one employee here that is still coming to the school with me, he cleans the keyboard every day before his shift starts. So every day before work, he cleans and he disinfects his keyboard and his mouse. All right, guys, toilet. People, please, if you go to the toilet, clean the toilet. Not just now in this outbreak of coronavirus. Clean the toilet all the time. When this coronavirus passes, Please, continue to clean your toilet, guys. It's very dirty. Sink and faucet. Guys, remember, faucet is where the water comes from. It comes from the faucet. So we open the faucet, we close the faucet, the water will come or not, all right? The sink is where the water will pour. So we have the sink and the faucet, all right? Sink and faucets are also a uh, surface that the virus stays for a long, long time. So you wanna clean the faucet, you wanna clean the sink, it's very important, people. Guys, next topic. Now we're going to, to talk about the use of hand sanitizer and other disinfectant, 
okay? The use of hand sanitizer and other disinfectant, it was a big polemic here in our region. And a lot of people, a lot of students, they don't know the difference, but in English, we don't normally say gel alcohol or alcohol in gel or whatever you call it. We don't want to say it. We want to say hand sanitizer. Of course, what's one of the products of a hand sanitizer? Uh, alcohol, okay, in gel, because they say that gel alcohol stays in your, uh, in your hand for longer than the liquid. But guys, the name is alcohol, okay? Uh, we don't want to call it alcohol. Alcohol is the product used in the, in the solution. We want to call it hand sanitizer. What's a hand sanitizer? Anything and everything that sanitizes, that disinfect your hand. So let's focus on two words right here. We have the verb to disinfect equals sanitize. For example, I will sanitize my toilet. I will sanitize my toilet. I will disinfect my toilet. Is the same. So hand sanitizer is a substance that sanitizes your hand. Okay? So let's think about this. In the, case, in the case of coronavirus, only if, if and only if soap and water is not rarely available, okay? So, if soap and water are not rarely available, uh, use a hand sanitizer. But remember, we want a hand sanitizer that is 60% or more concentration of alcohol. So, it's, it has to be a 60% or more concentration of alcohol to be efficient and to kill the virus, okay? So, you want to cover, when you do this, it's very important, I'll show you. Yay, I'm back! So, when you are using a hand sanitizer of any kind, this is my liquid hand sanitizer. When you're using a hand sanitizer in gel or in liquid, what you want to do is you want to cover all of your hand, okay? So, Yes, be generous, okay guys? We're talking about disease right now. You want to cover all of your hand and you, you want to rub it, okay? Rub one hand against the other hand, so rub it. Rub it real good. <laughs> you want to rub it, okay, until your hands feel dry. Oh yeah, my hands are dry and free of virus now. So, yes, that's when you use it. But guys, also, it's very important to disinfect other places, okay? Uh, my clothes or my shoes or the surfaces, like I said. And you don't need to spend money on alcohol. It's expensive. People were selling this for 20 bucks here in Brazil. 20? No, I paid 25 bucks for this. It's a steal, okay? It's a ripoff. But anyway, you can just, to clean your surfaces, to clean the places around your house. You can just use a mix of water and bleach. Guys, now let's see, what's bleach? See that picture right there? In the back, we have the bottle of Clorox. Clorox is the name of the brand, okay, guys? The name of the product is bleach, okay? That's how we call it. Bleach is perfect. Bleach kills the virus instantly, okay? No questions asked. If you use bleach, the virus will die instantly. So you can just do a ratio, a proportion of 200 milliliters of bleach to 5 liters of water. Alright guys, just to finish this class, let's talk about some precautions before you enter your house. I said that I have this bucket of water in my front door and I take some precaution, precautions when I enter my house. When I go inside my house, uh, or when I am coming home from the street, I always, I always uh, take this, I take these steps, okay? So I always do these things before I go inside the house and it's very important. Number one, keep your shoes outside the house. Like I said, I never go inside my house with my shoes on. I clean my shoes or I leave them outside, okay? I keep my personal items. Guys, what, what are my personal items? My cell phone, my keys. Guys, keys are very dangerous. It's a carrier of the virus, okay? So, my cell phone, my keys, my backpacks or my purses, okay? 
keep your personal items on the dirty zone of your house. I found this interesting. Uh, I saw some pictures of people um, keeping a clean and dirty zone. Okay, so if you have a house, if you are in your house right now and you can do this, uh, you could use some tape. Okay, grab a, a piece of tape and put on the floor in front of your house. Okay, like that. when you enter the house, leave a space like one meter or two meters uh, to be your dirty zone. So you put a tape in that dirty zone. And then you will put that tape on the floor and you will write clean zone, dirty zone, okay? All of these personal items, everything that came from the street needs to be in the dirty zone. You don't want to put these things in the clean zone. So your shoes, your cell phone, your keys, your purses, keep them in the dirty zone. And then to the clean zone, you have uh, your clean items, of course. Guys, one thing that is important, go straight into the bathroom. You came home from the street, from work or from... Schools are closed, but if you came home from work, okay? Or if you came home from the street, go straight into the bathroom. Take off your shoes, keep your shoes in the dirty zone and go straight to the bathroom, okay? Guys, when you go to the bathroom, when you arrive in the bathroom, take your clothes off, okay? And place them in your laundry basket. Preferably in a plastic bag. But here's another tip. I personally, every time I take off my clothes, every time I go in the bathroom and I take off my clothes, in the past, I had the habit of shaking my clothes. Do not shake your clothes. When you shake your clothes, what you're doing is you are liberating all of the virus that could be or maybe in your clothes you are spreading you are the spreader you are the person responsible to spread the virus everywhere in your bathroom so you don't want to do this you want to carefully take off your clothes fold them put it inside a plastic bag and keep them in your laundry basket if you don't want to go through this trouble take your clothes carefully okay do not shake it take your take your clothes off carefully, place them in the laundry basket, don't touch the basket, okay? And there you have it, guys, the precautions that you need to do uh, in order to prevent, in order to be careful, and in order to stay safe, okay? So, after all this, now you're clean, now you're safe, uh, enjoy the rest of your days, enjoy the rest of your life, because we will all get through this problem. One thing that is very important is that uh, this is a momentary problem. It's not permanent. It's temporary and we will go through all of these problems together. Uh, I'm here to help you if you need, all right? Uh, if you have any questions, just talk to me. There we have it, guys. I hope you learned all of the tips that I gave you. And most importantly, I hope you learned all of the vocabulary necessary to talk in English about coronavirus. Uh, subscribe, all right? Hit the subscription link below and make sure to share this video with as many people as you can or as many people as you want. Share this video, spread the good news. Don't spread the virus, spread the news, spread my class, all right? I'll see you in the next Vocab for Life class. See ya.